While most single women struggle to connect with guys, a small percentage of them disproportionately get the most loyal and visceral commitment from worthy men. And I'm not talking about empty chemistry or lust, I'm talking about deep emotional connection, protection, desire, and respect. In today's video, I reveal the seven simple habits that set you apart from the rest and make you the one he can't forget. If you're someone who hasn't been able to create the connection, the devotion, the pursuit, the commitment you want from a worthy guy, this video is for you. And the reason why it's so important to listen to it is because in this day and age, sadly, and this is my assessment, but I don't think I'm wrong, there are far more women who are looking for a conscious, connected, healthy, emotionally amazing relationship than there are men out there to fulfill those roles. Because that is the case. If you want to get what you want and not spend 10 years in the process, the fastest way to get there is to massively stand out. And I'm not asking you to stand out in terms of converting yourself into someone you're not so men like you. That's not what this video is about. This video is about how can you use the principles I'm sharing right now beyond men to turn your life into the most connected, self-expressed, alive, and beautiful version of you from the inside out that just so happens to be highly attractive to intelligent men. So think about this in terms of how can I practice these principles to be a better version of me than how can I manipulate myself in such a way that men find me attractive. The first key difference between the 1% of women who get all the attention, all the attraction, all the desire, all the pursuit, and the rest is that these women are self-ignited. They have the capacity and the ability to turn their light on. Maya Angelou once said, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. What does this mean? My invitation to you in this specific point is that you do whatever you need to do in life. Am I saying it's easy? No, but it's doable. So you connect with your life force so powerfully that you can take people's breath away, not necessarily because you're sexy enough, but because your light, your radiance, the fullness of your heart is able to feel people around you and impact them in ways that no words could actually do, same justice. If you've had the experience of somebody entering the room and people feeling their presence, I need you to do your version of that. And again, you're not doing it to get people's attention, you're doing it because you want to add value to people's life. You wanna shake things up, you wanna wake people up from their mediocrity to life can be better, Life can be more alive. And when you do the movement, when you connect with things you're passionate about, when you feel yourself with inspiration, when you do your own work and you show up that way, you are the kind of woman, regardless of your DNA, that men want to connect with because they feel intensely alive in your presence. The second key habit that women who get the majority of attention, devotion, and attention from men is they go all in on their uniqueness. A noble, winning, author by the name of André Gide said once, it is better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for what you're not. So think about it this way. There are so many human beings because they've been hurt, they've experienced rejection, they want to fit in, that instead of embracing their quirkness, their uniqueness, their nerdiness, whatever makes them different but unique, they actually try to hide that. And when you hide your uniqueness, you make it really, really hard for the guy who would love and embrace your awesome weirdness to say, I'm here, please step up with me. Whenever you try to vanilla yourself into a version of you that is more like you like everything and you are like everyone else because you don't want to be rejected, the harder you make it to stand out and to become the human being that men really want. So this really means that I need you to be clear with who you are and I'm not talking about, I'm selfish, so I'm going to express more of that. I'm talking about healthy habits that are different, that are unique, that are special, to double down on them and to start expressing them more powerfully so that when guys connect with you, they more quickly can self-identify as a candidate to pursue you or self-disqualify themselves, in which case you win. The next difference between women who get all the attention and devotion from men and those who don't is they embrace their sensuality. I'm not talking about being sexy. I'm talking about connecting to their senses. Leonardo da Vinci once said, the five senses are the ministers of the soul. So what does this mean? Whenever you take it upon yourself to connect with your senses, touch, smell, every part of your being is engulfed in the world. You're connecting to pleasure. You're connecting to self-expression. You're connecting with radiance. You're connecting with light. You're connecting with life force. So what happens when you connect to your senses? 
hear, touch, smell, what happens is you become more attractive. You don't have to work so hard at being someone that men look into. You naturally move, walk, Breathe, open your heart, open the space, open the vibe to be a highly desired woman. Why? Because you are connected to your femininity, you're connected with your emotions, you're connecting to your expression, and men flock to that like bees flock to honey. Fourth biggest difference between women who get absolutely what they want from men and those who struggle to get it is they are clear about their values and committed to their values. Carl Jung once said, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. You can't become who you truly are if you're not aware of what your values are or if you're aware of your values but can't do things in such a way that you live into them daily or weekly or monthly. This means you need to take some time to know the difference between values that are inherently needed for you and values that are nice to have. Because when you connect with men, if you connect with guys who have different values and you're not even aware of what they are because you're not aware of what yours are, then you might find yourself in a relationship that is painful, that is contentious, that is addictive, and you find out three years later that you're incompatible. If you have taken more time to recognize from the beginning, and ask better questions and be keenly aware of what's most important to you and express your needs and you would have found out maybe the first second date that something that's super important to you is missing that person and if that's the case you can move on and even though it might feel painful it's far better than wasting time with them commitment to values is important because if you don't commit to values then you'll be at the mercy of what his values are which might be different opposite or negative to your life now before i share my last three points which are really important for you to harness understand and practice if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware or not aware at all of the root cause where you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of challenge you can imagine, to help them to step into the relationship they've been craving, long-term relationships, marriages, life partnerships. And I've created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will tell you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and within 60 seconds, you'll get two things. The answer to the elusive question why you're still single, the truth about that. And number two is a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of time. The fifth difference between women who get the attention, the devotion they want from men versus those who don't is they are artfully holding directness and kindness at the same time. Another way of saying that is they are graceful and clear and direct when they set boundaries. Mother Teresa once said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. Another quote by the amazing Maya Angelou, if you've ever heard the poem Phenomenal Woman, there's a part that talks about this. It says, I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. What does that mean? That means that you don't have to make a fuss about it. You don't have to shout. You don't have to make the guy wrong. You can simply say, hey, this doesn't work for me. You can say, hey, if you really want to connect with me, here's what I need to feel safe. If you want to have sex with me, here's the steps you need to take to be able to connect with me at that level. I have boundaries. I have values. I have certain standards. And if you can meet those standards, we're connected. If you meet those standards, we can date. If you meet those standards, we can be in a relationship. So your ability to be able to know what you want clearly and say it in the kindest way, minimum force necessary is the concept, right? You don't have to shoot a cannon at a rabbit. You can if you want to, but if you do, the rabbit's gone, completely disappear. So what you want to do is be able to say, here's what's important for me to date a man. Here's what's important for me to get physical with him. Here's what's important for me to have sex with him. Here's what's important for me to be in a relationship with him. Here's what's important for me to marry him. And clearly throughout the process of the relationship or the dating process, say, here's the next step for me to be able to go the distance. Here's what I need. The sixth difference between women who get the devotion and commitment from men and those who don't is paced vulnerability. Brenda Brown said, what makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful. Nothing could be further from the truth if you're with the right guy. If you're with the wrong guy, what makes you vulnerable makes you a target. What makes you vulnerable makes you someone he can abuse or take advantage of. So that's why the phrase paced vulnerability is so important. I connect with so many women who proudly share with me they wear the heart on their sleeve. That is dangerous. If you wear your heart on your sleeve without concern as to who you're sharing it with, you can get hurt, you can get rejected, you can get abused, you can get into a lot of trouble. So my recommendation is being vulnerable is incredibly important because if you're not vulnerable, the guy's not going to feel what he needs to feel. 
to take action, to do more for you, to protect you in the best of ways. So when you're vulnerable and pace yourself, it means you share a little bit about yourself and you wait and see how he responds. Is he respectful? Is he kind? Is he compassionate? Is he pursuant? Is he sharing about himself as well? Once all those things take place, then you share a little more and then you repeat the cycle. If at any point the guy becomes disrespectful towards you, if at any point the guy tries to shame you for what you're doing, you stop, you pause, you don't go further until you clarify, right? Because what you want to do is not share your entire life and be so vulnerable that he knows you in five hours, but not to play games, but because you want to make sure that he earns the right and you earn the right to learn more about him in the best of ways. The seventh and last habit I'll share today is being courageously interdependent. Helen Keller said something very beautiful, which is alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. So there's going to be a few different stages. One is going to be the codependent stage where you need him for basic things that you should be able to do on your own. That is painful and that is not what you want. Next stage, which is better than that, is fierce independence, which means you do what you want with whom you want. You don't need him for anything. If you go at it that way, and many women have had to train themselves to do this, but now they're suffering because they can't create that interdependence. If you are that way, you need to be able to step down a little bit and create interdependence, which means some of the needs are going to be met by you and you only, and some are going to be met through their relationship, which is why it's so important, which is the right partner. When you start meeting needs healthily with that partner, as you meet your own needs, that is where one and one becomes much more than two. Now, what's next? I would love for you as a challenge to maybe go back and re-listen to this video if you haven't taken notes. Ask yourself, of this seven habits, which one is my biggest gap between where I am and where I want to be? And do something today, one thing that gets you closer to the result you're looking for. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is, it means the world to me because this is how I can grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe to my channel, far too many women watch these videos but don't subscribe. Subscribe, it really matters and helps. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.